Okay, good morning all. Am I audible? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you, Anupam. Okay, so in the last class, uh, just I have started discussing the differentiability of a complex valued function. So, I have discussed uh, what do you mean by uh, or how we can def uh, de uh, find the derivative of a complex number and how to check the differentiability of a complex valued function. After that, I have told that uh, compared to the function of one real variable or two real variable, here we will be studying uh, some more broader concept in terms of analytic function. So, the concept of analytic function is more broader, concept of the differentiability of a function or differentiable function. Because if a function is analytic, then it ensures that the function is not only differentiable at a given point, but around that given point, we can construct any arbitrary neighborhood where the function is differentiable at each and every point inside that neighborhood. Okay. So, then I have discussed uh, there are three kinds of analytic function. One is analytic function in a domain, sorry, analytic function at a point. That means only at that point the function is analytic. Then analyticity in a domain, that means at each and every point inside that domain the function is analytic. Then analytic in the entire complex plane, that means in the entire complex plane I can choose any arbitrary uh, point and at that point the function will be analytic. Okay. So, uh, so uh, there are three concepts of analytic function. So, analyticity at a point is uh, uh, so compared to analyticity at a point the analyticity in a domain is much broader then compared to analyticity in a domain the entire function is much broader okay so let me see my screen so today we will be studying actually so how to check whether a given function is analytic or not and what are the conditions okay. so can you see the screen Yes, sir. Okay. So, all these things I have discussed uh, in the last class. Okay. Then another uh, definition is a singular point. Singular point means the critical point also. It is denoted as critical point also. A point Z0 is said to be a singular point of the function Fz. Each Fz is not analytic at Z0. That means if a function is analytic at a given point, then we will be saying that the function is analytic at a point. And if there are some points where the function is not analytic, then we will be saying that the point is a singular point with respect to that given function. Then how to check uh, whether a function is analytic or not? So for that we need to know uh, one important equation that is called as the Cauchy-Riemann equation or CR equation. So what is the CR equation? So while we are talking about uh, the function of complex variable, so you know that in the case of function of complex variable there are four variables. So two independent, two dependent. So dependent variables are u and v where u is the real part of the dependent variable w and v is the imaginary part of the dependent variable w and corresponding to the independent variable z there are also real and imaginary part so x is the real part corresponding to the independent variable z and y is the imaginary part corresponding to the independent variable z then you know that while we do differentiation we find the rate of change of the dependent variable with respect to independent variable so here there are two dependent variable and two independent variable okay so two dependent and two independent so, how many partial derivatives we will be getting from here? So, you know that whenever, yeah, we will be getting four partial derivatives because you know that whenever you have studied uh, the function of two real variables in first semester, you know that j equals to fxy. So, since the number of independent variables are two there, so we can actually differentiate z with respect to x partially, z with respect to y partially. So, similarly here, since the number of dependent variables are two, u and v, and number of independent variables are also 2 that is x and y. 
so we can do differentiation of u with respect to x as well as u with respect to y similarly we can do partial derivative with, of v with respect to y and with respect to x so total there will be four partial derivatives so cauchy riemann equation means the relationship am among those four partial derivatives so if fz is a function whose real part is u and imaginary part v and independent variable z has real part x and imaginary part y and if the four partial deriv derivative satisfies this equation that means the partial derivative of u with respect to x will be same as partial derivative of v with respect to y and partial derivative of u with respect to y will be minus of partial derivative of v with respect to x if four partial derivatives which you are obtaining from here satisfies these two equations then it is called as the cauchy riemann equation so a function is said to be satisfying cauchy riemann equation if for that given function u v x y which you are obtaining satisfies this equation otherwise we say that this doesn't satisfy the cauchy riemann equation so just uh, let us verify whether the cauchy riemann equation is satisfied for a function or not just i am giving one example so let's say if z equals to can you see the blank screen is it visible blank screen yes yeah, yeah, fz equals to z square so fz is w equals to z square so this can be written in the form of uh, x plus iy whole square so this is x square if you segregate y square plus i into 2xy so here this is our u uxy and this is our vxy so we need to verify whether this function satisfies the cauchy riemann equation so for that we need to find out the partial derivative four partial derivatives so what is del u del x it is 2x what is del u del y that will be minus 2y what is del v del x what is del v del x vxy is 2xy so del v del x is actually 2y and what is del u del x uh, sorry del v del x uh, del v del y 2x 2x so here del u del x is equals to del v del y and del u del y equals to minus del v del x so here this relationship are satisfy that means these two equations are satisfy so that's why this function we will say that this function satisfies the cauchy riemann equation was that clear now what is the necessary and sufficient condition for a function to be analytic so can anyone tell me what do you mean by the necessary and sufficient condition because this definition will uh, these terms will be used whenever we will be talking about different theorems in mathematics so what is the necessary and sufficient condition can anyone tell me any theorem where you have studied this term in first year you have studied this term anyone what do you mean by the necessary and sufficient condition said means that these conditions are uh, sufficient to explain the uh, behavior of this equation no actually uh, this is not true uh, so necessary and sufficient condition means just i am telling uh, just you try to remember okay so let's say there are two statements a is a part of a statement or theorem and b is another part so assuming a b can hold or assuming b a can hold so one is called as a necessary part and another is called as a sufficient part that means there are two criteria that means a is one thing b is another thing so if a holds then b will hold that is one part and if b holds then a will hold that is another part so now we need to identify which one is the necessary part and which one is the sufficient part so uh, just i am giving one example of theorem that i have studied earlier that is a rolls theorem can anyone tell me what is the rolls theorem can anyone remember what is the rolls theorem in the first semester you have studied hmm have you forgot anyone can you identify the name 
Can you remember that? That you have studied this in first semester? Can you remember that or not? So what is the Rolle's theorem? So Rolle's theorem states us that there are two parts. So AP is a function that is defined from closed interval AB to the set of real numbers. Then what is one part? The first part. This is the first part and another is second part. One part is if dash should be 0. Another part is there are three conditions. One is if it's continuous in closed AB, if is differentiable in the open interval AB, and number three, if A equals to FB. So, this is one part, this is another part. So, if this holds, then this may hold or may not hold. And if this holds, then this may hold or this may not hold. So, just tell me, uh, if uh, this is a part A and this is part B, let's say. So, if A holds, then will B hold always? No, sir. Okay. Because you know that if f dash c equals to 0, then f is continuous, f is differentiable, otherwise the derivative will not exist. But f a may not be equal to f b. So, if this holds, this is not true. That means, this implies this is not valid. But if this holds, then always this will hold. That means, f dash c is 0 if these conditions are happening. So, it is called as the sufficient condition. f dash c holds f dash equals to 0 if this holds, that means this part, that means if b holds, then a will hold. So, that is called as the sufficient part. But f dash equals to 0, this does not imply that all these three conditions will be valid. So, this is called as the necessary part. So, here this theorem is sufficient but not necessary. That means this is not true. That means if this holds, this may not hold all of it. So, that means, that is why we can say that this condition is sufficient but not necessary. Is that clear or not? Have you got it? Sir, so explain for what is, for us. explain which is only sufficient. Okay. So, there are two parts. So, f dash c equals to 0, for that, these three conditions required, 1, 2 and 3. So, that is sufficient part. That means, f dash c equals to 0, if these three holds. So, that is actually sufficient part. Is that clear? That the, means, uh, the three conditions are second part is the sufficient part. Yeah, that not, not three conditions are sufficient means if this holds, then it will hold. This is totally called as a sufficient condition. That means if three conditions are valid, then only this will hold, this will be true. So that is sufficient part. But if this is true, that doesn't always imply that these three conditions will be valid. So that is called as the necessary part. So necessary part is not true here. Because if this holds, then these three will not be followed necessarily. That means, if this holds, this will not be followed necessarily. But these conditions are sufficient to show that this will hold. Is that clear? Yes. So, the things that are required to prove certain thing is called as a sufficient part. And if certain, certain thing holds, then the consequences of this thing is called as a necessary part. So, if this holds, the consequences will be this and this. But the third one will not be always the consequences. So, it will not be necessarily true. But these conditions are sufficient to show that these conditions will hold. Is that clear? Yes. Okay. So, in the case of analytic function, what are the two parts? So, one thing will be the function f is analytic. This is one part. And another thing will be, obviously there will be certain conditions. These are certain conditions. So, that will be studying. So, just tell me which one will be uh, sufficient part here? Just compare with the previous one. Is, necessary is to be analytic. But not so, so. No, sufficient will be analytic because if f is analytic, if this condition holds, so that is actually sufficient. And necessary will be? f is analytic 
then if this condition holds then it will be necessary is that clear because here what we are doing f dash equals to 0 if this holds so that is sufficient so similarly here also f is analytic if certain condition holds so that will be sufficient actually clear and if f is analytic we know that f is analytic then if certain conditions are followed then we will be saying that this is necessary sir niche chitkar kar diya matlab vehchi are ami keno bolche bolun to apnar kotha bolchilen na brishti hocche to oi jonno jore awaz ta hocche Is that clear? Have you got it? So just compare with uh, the previous one. That means F dash equals to zero. For that, these three conditions will be required. Similarly, here also to prove that F is analytic, the conditions which are required is called as the sufficient thing. And FDC is zero. For that, the consequences that we are obtaining is the necessary part. Similarly, here F is analytic. For that, the consequences which we are obtaining is called as the necessary part. Is that clear? Is that clear or not? In the uh, uh, rules theorem, the uh, second condition uh, consists of the three questions. Yeah. That is sufficient word. Not the condition is sufficient. Yeah, these conditions are sufficient to show that it is zero. So in in the case we can write F dash is zero if this is old. So similarly here also these conditions are sufficient to show that F is analytic. So F is analytic if this holds, it is called as a sufficient part. Is okay, these conditions are sufficient. Obviously, these conditions are sufficient to show that F is analytic. So what are the criteria required are to so show an arbitrary function is analytic is actually sufficient condition. Okay. And we know that F is analytic. For that the consequences is necessary. Okay. Just uh, let me discuss over here. So what is the necessary sufficient condition? So we need Fz is arbitrary function. So we don't know whether the function is analytic or not. So then, if these two conditions holds, that means the four partial derivatives must be satisfying cosy Riemann equation, and the second one is these four partial derivatives should be continuous. So if these two condition holds, then a arbitrary function f z will be analytic. Okay. Like the Rolle's theorem. In the case of Rolle's theorem, there are three criteria. Similarly, here also there are two criteria. So this will be analytic if these two holds. So these two conditions are sufficient to show that f z is analytic. So if a arbitrary function is given to us and we are asked to show that the function is analytic, then we need to check these two conditions. Okay. Was that clear? Similarly, the necessary part is that if f z is analytic, so we know that f z is analytic, then obviously these two will be followed. So that is called as the necessary part. So this condition is sufficient as well as necessary. Unlike the um, Rolle's theorem, this condition is sufficient as well as the necessary condition. So sufficient part is these two conditions. If holds, we can show that f z is analytic. So to show that f z is analytic, we require the sufficient conditions. And by knowing that f z is analytic, the conditions which we are obtaining, that means these two will be valid always. Then this is called as the necessary part. Was that clear? Yes, so then a derivative of a complex valued function. So in terms of a cosy Riemann equation, we can actually write the derivative of a complex function in that way. So f dash z is denoted as the partial derivative of u with respect to x plus i of into partial derivative of v with respect to x because f z is u plus i v. So roughly if you remember f dash z will be the derivative of u and v but u and v are functions of two variables x and y. So whenever we are finding out the partial derivative of u with respect to x and y, then they will be considered. So either we can do the differentiation with respect to x. So f dash z will be either del u del x plus i del v del x. 
that means we are doing the differentiation partially with respect to x then this is denoted as f dash z so just i am not discussing here how to uh, get this result if someone is willing to know how to get this result then i will be uh, showing it elaborately otherwise just you can remember f dash z is denoted by this now if you want to convert the partial derivative with, with, in terms of y since the function is differentiable so obviously the function will be analytic so since the function is analytic so function must satisfy the cauchy riemann equation then as per the cauchy riemann equation del u del x equals to del v del y and del v del x equals to minus del u del y so in that way the partial derivatives of u and v with respect to x you can convert in the terms of partial derivative with respect to y okay is that clear Is that clear or not? So just uh, this is a uh, definition, but I am not discussing here how to uh, get this result. Just you need to remember the result. If you are asked to find out the derivative, so without finding out by using the first principle or any other rule, just by using the partial derivatives of the real and imaginary part of the function, you can obtain the derivative in that form. Okay. Yes, sir. Then I am uh, discussing some problem here, so that the function f z equals to e to the power x cos y plus i sin y. So this is a function of complex variable. So that is u, that is v. So here you don't need to segregate uh, u and v, rather it is given. So you need to show that it is analytic, and they, hence you need to find out its derivative. So f z equals to u plus i v. So here u is e to the power x cos y, and v is e to the power x sin y. So to show that uh, th uh, this is analytic, what do you need to show? We need to just show these two conditions. That means uh, the four partial derivatives satisfying the cauchy riemann equation and the four partial derivatives are continuous. Then we are done. So what will be del u del x? So del u del x will be the partial derivative of e to the power x by keeping cos y constant. So e to the power x cos y. The partial derivative of this u with respect to y, this will be fixed and the derivative of cos y with respect to y that is e to the power x minus sin y. And del u del v, del v del x will be e to the power x sin y, and del v del y will be e to the power x cos y. Now here, del u del x is equal to del v del y, and del u del y equal to minus del v del x. So obviously, it is satisfying the cauchy riemann equation. Now, here, what are the four partial derivatives? This is one partial derivative, this is one partial derivative, this is one partial derivative, and this is another partial derivative. So here you can uh, see that. All the partial derivatives will be defined for any arbitrary value of x and y, because if you take any arbitrary value of x and y, these four partial derivatives will be defined. So since these four partial derivatives are defined for any arbitrary value of x and y, so obviously they are continuous. That's why here four partial derivatives are continuous, as well as they are satisfying the cauchy riemann equation. Hence the function will be analytic. So since the function is analytic. So we can find out the derivative by using this formula. So the derivative of that will be f dash z, that is del u del x plus i del v del x will be equal to e to the power x cos y plus i e to the power x sin y, that is e to the power x into e to the power i y. Because if we take e to the power x common, that will be cos y plus i sin y. So by Euler's theorem, that will be e to the power i y. So that is e to the power x plus e to the power i y. So that will be e to the power z. So derivative of this in terms of z will be e to the power z. Is that clear? If it is not clear, you can ask me. I can show it again. Separately, I can solve it. Yes, sir. Please do. Okay. Please repeat. Okay. Then I am showing it separately here. Let's say the function is given here. Just forget about this function. It will be part z. This function is given. So, in order to show that the function is analytic, you should identify the imaginary part and real part. That means you need to convert f z in terms of u plus i v so how we can segregate this e to the power z means e to the power x plus i y so here we can write e to the power x into e to the power i y so that is e to the power x into cos y plus i sin y so what will be u here u will be e to the power x cos y v will be e to the power x sin y is that clear up to this is that clear okay now to show that it is it is an analytic function we need to show these two criteria one is the cauchy riemann equation is satisfied that means del u del x equals to del v del y 
and del u del y equals to minus del v del s. Number two is we need to show that all these four partial derivatives. Are continuous. They made a. Is that clear? Is that clear or not? Oh. So what is delu del x? Delu del x means this is a term containing a, so this will be differentiated with respect to x partial, keeping y terms fixed, and delu del y. That will be. Minus it will be by a sine y, it will be by a sine y fixed. The derivative of cos y with respect to y partial will be minus sine y. Then del v del x will be to the power x sine y. And del v del y will be to the power x cos y. So here this equals to this, and this equals to minus of this. So it is satisfying the Cauchy-Riemann equation. So first one is done. The second one is you need to show that these four are continuous. So continuous means if a function is defined at a given point, obviously this will be continuous at a given point. Is that clear or not? Yes, sir. So here, if you put any arbitrary value of x and y, if you take any arbitrary value of x and y, and if you put here, then always it will be by x is the exponential function. So exponential function is defined for any value of x. Similarly, the trigonometric functions like cos function and sine function is, are also defined for any arbitrary value of y. So together, this product of two functions are defined for any arbitrary value of x and y. Okay. So since these four partial derivatives are defined for any arbitrary value of x and y, so obviously they are continuous. Is that clear? Yes, sir. So. By combining these two criteria, you can say that the function is analytic. The function which is given as this. So instead of writing down this, the function is given uh, in the problem as this. That means the uh, real part and imaginary part have been separated. Now, what is the derivative? So you know that the deriv if you do the differentiation of f j with respect to j, so obviously f dash j will be it will be part j. But The function is not given in that term. Function is given in that term. So we know that we can identify the derivative as this. Or if I convert the partial derivative in terms of y, I can write down du dx is del v del y minus i del u del y. So I can write this in that way. So if I consider this, then what is del u del x? So del u del x is e to the power x cos y, and this is e to the power x sin y. So e to the power x cos y, i e to the power x sin y. So if we take e to the power x common, so it will be cos y plus i sin y. So e to the power x, e to the power i y. So e to the power x plus i y. So e to the power z. So derivative of f j to the respect to j is e to the power j. So by using this formula also we are getting the derivative of e to the power j. So this will be our required derivative. So in that way also we can verify that the derivative can be written in that form also. Is that clear now? Is that clear now or not? Yes, it is clear. Clear? Yes. Is it clear to all of you? Because this sort of problem will be given. Okay. Now here, this problem, in that problem we need to show that f z, which is denoted as this whenever z is not equal to zero, and at zero the function is defined as zero. So here the function is not a continuous function; that is a discrete function. Because for non-zero values of z, the function is defined as this, and whenever z becomes zero, the function is defined as this. So we need to show that it is satisfying the Cauchy-Riemann equation at origin. But f dash z doesn't exist. So what is here f z? f z is u plus i v. So if you uh, separate the real and imaginary part, we will be getting u as this and v as this. Now here, 
at origin we need to check so in the previous case just look at the problem no point is mentioned so that means you need to show that this is an entire function that means in the arbitrary for any arbitrary complex number we need to show that it is analytic but in this case it is giving for the specific point that is the origin in origin we need to show that this is analytic so in origin means if you do the partial derivative del u del x and del v del y and put the value x as y and y as y we will be finding that the value will be zero is it clear or not because what is u here u is x s cube minus y cube by x square plus y square and v is x s cube plus y cube by x square plus y square. So at origin, that means at j equals to zero or x y equals to zero zero, we need to show that this is not analytic. Although the Cauchy-Riemann equation satisfied at origin, but ultimately the function is not differentiable. So function is not differentiable at zero means the function cannot be analytic at zero. So, if you want to use the direct method, if you find the partial derivative of del u del x, then whatever you will be finding, x square plus y square whole square, then x square plus y square will be fixed. The partial derivative of these with respect to x, so this will be three x square minus x cube minus y cube. The partial derivative of these with respect to x, so this will be two x. So then, here if you put x equals to zero and y equals to zero, you will be getting this in the form of zero by zero. Is that clear or not? We have to prove that four derivatives are not continuous at zero. Yeah. So is that clear or not? But although you need to show that here Cauchy-Riemann equation is satisfied at the origin. That means del u del x equals to del v del y at zero, and del u del y equals to minus del v del x at zero. You need to show that also. You need to show that Cauchy-Riemann equation is satisfied at origin as well as you need to show that the partial derivatives are not continuous. Okay. Clear? Is that clear or not? Hmm? Because it is satisfying the Cauchy-Riemann equation. Origin means you need to show that del u del x equals to del v del y, and del u del y equals to minus del v del x at j equals to zero. But if you do the partial derivative directly and put x equals to zero and y equals to zero, then you won't be able to prove that because this partial derivative will be coming in terms of zero by zero. Is that clear or not? Yes, sir. So that's why. What do you need to do to so show that it is satisfying the Cauchy-Riemann equation? You need to use the definition. I don't know whether you can remember the definition of partial derivative of u. What is the definition? Definition means partial derivative means. U is a function of two variables. So here, del u del x at the point x y, that means this will be x plus h y minus u x y by h. That means since we are doing the partial derivative with respect to x, so the variable which is uh, coming in terms of y will remain constant. If x will be changed from x to x plus h. Similarly, del u del y will be limit. k tends to zero i don't know whether you have studied this in first uh, semester or not because i didn't take class in first semester multivariable calculus x y plus k minus u x y by k so can you remember these definitions for partial derivative like the first principle can you remember these or not yes sir similarly del v del x will be limit a tends to zero for the variable v X will be changed from x to x plus y. This one. 
So similarly, by using the definition here, we need to find the partial derivative. So delu del x means limit x tends to zero. Y coordinate will be fixed at zero because while we are trying to find out the partial derivatives at zero, j equals to zero. That means x zero, y zero. So y is kept constant at zero, and x is getting changed from zero to zero plus x divided by x. Now u x zero means here you need to put x equals to x, y equals to zero. So that will be x cube by x square. So that will be x. <coughs> so the value will be one. Similarly, del u del y means y coordinate will be changed from zero to zero plus y. X coordinate will be fixed at zero by y. So if you put x zero y equals to y, so that will be minus y cube by y square. This will be minus y minus zero by y. So this value will be minus one. Similarly, this value will be plus one. This value will be minus one. So here you can find that del u del x at zero zero is equals to del v del x. Sorry, del v del y at zero zero, and del u del x, del u del y at zero zero is equals to minus del v del x at zero zero. So the partial derivatives are satisfied here at origin. That means they are satisfying the Cauchy-Riemann equation. But here you can find that one partial derivative we have found. So here, since this partial derivative is not defined at the point zero zero, so it is not continuous at the point zero zero because the partial derivatives are not defined. Because if you find the partial derivatives separately and put x equals to zero and y equals to zero, you will be getting that this is zero. So the function is not defined. These partial derivatives are not defined at all at the point zero zero. So they are not continuous. So sir, u sir u zero zero equals to the infinity. U zero zero. Yeah, x cube. Yeah. ताले वो खाने तो खाने वाटा तो फॉलो ही करो डेली डिलेक्स टॉन डिफिनेशन है। फॉलो क्यों रमन? वैसे यू जीरो जीरो इक्वल्स टू वो तो बात चला। यू जीरो जीरो तो जीरो, बिकॉज़ एफ जीरो इज़ जीरो, एफ जीरो मेंस की यू प्लस आई वी इक्वल्स अच्छा अच्छा तो गिवन तो गिवन ठीक the partial derivatives are not defined. So similarly, if you find del u del y, del v del x, del v del y, and put x equals to zero and y equals to zero, you will be finding that none of them are defined. So that's why here one condition is satisfied. That means function is satisfying the Cauchy-Riemann equation, but the partial derivatives are not continuous. So that's why the function is not analytic. So since the function is not analytic, so that that's why the derivative at zero doesn't exist. So by definition also we can show that. So derivative at zero means f dash zero. That means limit z tends to zero. F z minus f zero by z. That means limit x y tends to zero zero. F z is this. F zero is zero by z. Z means x plus i y. So let us consider that we are approaching towards the path uh, uh, towards zero zero through the path y equals to m x. Now if you substitute here y equals to m x, then y will be substituted in terms of x. So this limiting value will be dependent on x. So if you put y equals to m x and uh, simplify it. Then limiting value will be coming in that term. That means the limiting value depends on m. That means the path. So that's why the limit of this quotient doesn't exist. That's why also we can cross verify from here that the function doesn't have a derivative at zero. By cosy by analytic function also we can show that because it is satisfying the Cauchy-Riemann equation, but the partial derivatives are not continuous. So that's why it is not analytic. Since this is not analytic at origin, that's why this will not be differentiable at origin. So here I have discussed two different types of problems. So at one problem we have shown that the function is analytic. In the second uh, problem we have shown that although function is satisfying the Cauchy-Riemann equation, that means it is satisfying the first criteria, but since the second criteria is not satisfied, that's why the function is not analytic. Okay, is that clear? Sir, in the second case, the limit should be y tends to zero, no? Limit should be y tends to zero in the PPT. No, this one. No, no, sir. The slide you have shown previously. Yes, sir. Here. Oh, yeah, yeah. This will be y tends to zero. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, by mistake, we have written this. This will be y tends. Is that clear? Yes. Oh. Have you all understood? Because this is a class of uh, hardly 26, 30 students. So if you have any kind of problem, without any hesitation, you can ask me. So I am trying my best so that all of you can understand. Is that clear or not? 
others do respond yes sir it is clear okay. yes sir okay thank you okay so let me share uh, the link and exam code So this is the exam code and this is the link. Just click the link and provide your full enrollment number and the exam code and complete the class test. So someone just uh, check and uh, tell me whether you can access it right now or not. It is okay, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, just uh, finish the class test. Uh, the remaining time, so just I am leaving. Uh, so thank you all for attending today's class. So already I have shared the class note of the first lecture. So just uh, go through uh, that, and uh, some problems are also there for you to solve. So just try to solve those problems. And if you face any difficulty in solving any problem, just in the next class, uh, let me know. Thank you all. I'm leaving. The link is uh, redirecting me. Yeah. The code is redirecting. Sorry, someone, I can't sir, hear. Is, sir, the code is redirecting me. So I'm just uh, do one thing. Uh, so just uh, cancel the tab and uh, log in again. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you all. I'm leaving.